We are together again, praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord. Something good is going to happen. I can feel it in my soul. Together again, praising the Lord. Together again. Praise in the Lord. We are together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. I can feel it in my soul. Together again. Praise in the Lord. We are together again. Praise in the Lord. We are together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. I can feel it in my soul. Together again, praise in the Lord. God moves in mercy. Cross with this one, just to walk on the plow. It's what the sea and rise. Upon the storm, deep on summer, landscape. He can up his bright design and work his soul in this. He can fresh God, rich thick, the cloud is so much dressed, abyss with no desire, with breath, Sins on your head, judge not the Lord by fear, but trust him for his grace. Behind upon the sun, we dance. He hides Shall be 
the flower blind on belief is to wear and his work in vain God is his own in time and he will make it a uh, blessed and peaceful good morning grace mercies and peace to all those within the sound of my voice i greet you in the precious name of jesus christ the soon coming king um the god that has kept us the god that continues to keep us the god that looks beyond our faults and he sees our need the god that says to us that his mercies are new every morning um Welcome again to yet another Sunday of worship. Um, I pray God that our hearts are indicting in a good matter, that we would glorify and that we would praise God in the beauty of holiness. Um, we are about to, to go into the worship um, and we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, Mother Angela pray for us. Um, and yes thank you and then from there we're going to go um we have the exalter and then we have the word um the exalter today the lesson is um john 3 16 and the exalter is going to be exalting on love and then we're going to have the speaker who is going to speak on us on the topic grow up hallelujah we bless the name of the lord in the name of Jesus. So we're going to have Mother Angela do a universal prayer that is going to um, cover all of us. And while wherever you are sitting, you are free to pray also at this time to bow in prayer as we go before God, you know, asking him once more, thanking him first, and then asking him to continue to cover us in the name of Jesus. So um, take your hymn books and and we're gonna go to hymn number 268. I'm gonna sing and then we are going to go straight into prayer in the precious name of Jesus. <clears throat> hymn number 268, Lord in this thy mercy face. And I'm gonna just sing a couple of um, verses. I'm not gonna sing the entire thing. We bless the name of the Lord. Oh. In this time of season, every on our knees. We fall and pray, oh, Jesus, you grant us yes, fill us with in fear and that all Lord, 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 on us thy spirit for me the door The 
दो देखो This morning, mm. this morning, eternal and ever wise God, mm. coming before your presence this morning mm. with no strength and no power of my own. Mm. But I'm coming this morning, blessed God, to say, mm. if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, mm. no may Israel seek. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when they arose and kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us and the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as it brought out of the snares of the fowler. A snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. This morning, blessed God, this morning, this morning, Elohim, this morning, great Jehovah, Jai, this morning, this morning, Jehovah, me see this morning, this morning, Jehovah Elohim, this morning, coming up God to give praise and thanks this morning. Before your throne of grace, we come in this morning, blessed Lord. Each and every one of HEBM this morning, blessed God, as I'm about to stand up, Lord God, before your throne on behalf of my sisters and brothers this morning. Lord God, I'm coming this morning not asking anything, blessed God. For you have given us it all already this morning, Jesus. But Lord God, we're receiving it in Jesus' name this morning. And we're thanking you this morning, blessed God. We're coming, oh God, with a thankful prayer this morning, a thankful mind, a thankful heart this morning. Only to thank and glorify you, oh God. Every morning, blessed God. 
if it not have been for you on our side this morning, oh, oh God of my Israel, and we want to praise you, Lord. Yes, oh we want to lift your name up in glory because you're so worthy to be praised. Ten tongues and another tongues is not sufficient to praise you this morning. I'm praising you, blessed God, on behalf of each and everyone this morning. Oh God of our Israel, I'm Israel. praising you this morning, blessed God, Lord, for those that ask for prayer this morning, thanking you, blessed God, and I'm and, 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 and thanking you, Lord God, that they have received in your name this morning, Jesus. Oh God, Lord, and our Father this morning, forgive us, Lord God, for all, Lord God, the wrong things that we have done and said. We fall Hallelujah. short and become short of your glory this your morning. Glory, but I know, Lord God, that you're mighty to save and you're uh, strong to deliver, to blessed God. I know that you say none, blessed God, oh, shall be lost this morning. You say, Hallelujah. blessed God, that you will go wherever oh, this morning to deliver us, blessed Lord. Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord oh God, and we praise you and we glorify your name. name. Lord God, we honor we Lord God, we honor this morning. Oh, we, we Lord God, we wear our prayers and our supplication oh, can be given. We want to praise you this morning, oh God. This hallelujah, is a praise of thanks, blessed God, in your name. Jesus, oh, for you first has loved us. Hallelujah, one day, hallelujah. blessed God, this morning, eh, like one day, like one day, Jesus, Jesus, you shed your bread on Calvary Cross oh, this morning, no, no, that, oh no, God, we no, no. might be made free, oh God, oh, and oh God, I'm yeah, 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 this morning, you yeah, 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 said today, wherever you are, you Thank you, Lord. But oh God, such as we have this morning, our oh, heart, our mind, our body, and our soul and spirit, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, God, for the, the, those that are in prayer this morning. Thank you for them, blessed Jesus, that they know no other body but you. And they no, call on you, blessed no, God. And yeah, it's the yeah, one that yeah, call on you, blessed God, that you will not answer. Oh, and I thank yeah, you this yeah, morning, yeah, blessed God. Yeah, oh, Lord God, we thank you. And we receive oh, your we love and grace and in mercy and in peace. In no other name, but in Jesus yeah, Almighty. But in Jesus Almighty. In Jesus Almighty name. In Jesus Almighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Yes. What a amen. friend we have in yes. Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry every Sing to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry every Sing to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Who oh, can we find a friend so faithful? Who oh, will all our sorrows bear? 
for oh, Jesus knows all every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. At this time, we're going to have the reading for the um, Exalter, which is coming from John 3, 16. Uh, we praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And allow me to ask um, Sister Annette to read for us John 3, 16 for the Exalter. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pleasant good morning to Teacher Esther. Pleasant good morning to Mother Angela. Pleasant good morning. To Sister Nadia mm -hmm. and all the members of whole, um, House of Esther. Pleasant, pleasant good morning. Pleasant what good morning. What a privilege it is to have service on Zoom. And Praise I God. Paul and ask to read on the verb coming from St. John 3, 16. Yes. And here begins, God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'll rest at the 16th verse from John chapter 3, verse 16, containing 36 verses. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We bless the name of the Lord. At this point in time, we are about to have the, the exalter and the exalter is going to speak to us. Her topic is love. Put your hands together and welcome Sister Faith to the church. Church, Sister Faith. Faith, um, church, Sister Faith, church. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Then I give my life to Queen Esther, to the mother of the mother Angela. Praise to God. The, to the captains, to the APs, to 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 teacher, to um teacher Hillary, to all of you wonderful wonderful people in your respective offices. Praise God. Families and visitors. Today Praise I'll be talking about love. Yes. What does love mean? Love is patient and kind. Yes. Love is love is deep. Enduring concern for others, welfare, affection, and friendship. <clears throat> love is not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. It is not irritate or resentful. It does mm -hmm. not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the in the in the Lord. Yes never ends. What is the color of love? The color of love is red. Red. Violent. Violent is the an innocent royal color and therefore is a symbol of of the servity of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. And vocates the color of blood and therefore is the color of merity and Christ and Christ's death on the cross. Red yes. also symbolizes, symbolizes fire and therefore is the color of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God sent his only begotten son to die mm -hmm. for our sins. Yes. He sent his only son to die on for our sins because he loved us. Yes. If he didn't love us, he never could have could he never could have sent his son for us if he didn't love us. 
and we wouldn't be here on here today. But Amen. because he loved us, he he sent his son to die for us. Yes. For example, if you ask your mom for a piece of chocolate and she says mm -hmm. no, you could have a piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, because she loves you, she gave you an option. But but if she didn't love you, she could have never gave you an option. Mm -hmm. But it's because she loves you. Amen. And she, and she was showing love to you. Yes. By giving you options. Yes, yes, amen. And so did God by sending his only begotten son to die for our sins. Yes. Instead of, instead of sending an animal. Yes. Instead, instead of sacrificing your own son, he yes. could have sacrificed an animal, but he didn't yes. do that. He sacrificed amen. his only son for our sins. Amen, amen. And that's because he loves us. Yes. So today, church, I the only thing I want to say to you is because God loves us, mm -hmm. he sent his only son to for, uh, for our sins. Yes. But if he didn't love us, he could have never do that. But he loves mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. He loves us so he loves us so much. Mm -hmm. And now and he is showing love. He is showing love by by sacrificing his only son. Yes. Not two amen. sons. His yeah, only amen. son. Only son. son. Yes. Amen. God could never do that. But because he loves us, he did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And and is and it's just like sacrificing sacrificing your son, but he could have sacrificed an animal. But also again, because he loves us. He could have mm -hmm. never do it, but he loves us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. and he was also showing love. Yes. Love is deep and affection. Yes. And friendship. Yes. Yes. If you love somebody, you show to them by giving them flowers. Yes. Amen. Amen. But they, if they didn't love you, they couldn't never do that. Yeah. That's that. That wouldn't be love. That would be being rude. Mm hmm. Yes. And love is not rude. Love is not yes. injured. Love is not yes. boastful. Love is not yes. arrogant. Yes. It's none Amen. of those things. Amen. But 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 that person was showing love. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We bless Amen. the name. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Awesome. Hallelujah. Give Sister Faith a round of applause. Put your hands together. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. She said, love is none of those things. It's not boastful. It's not, it's not arrogant. It's not puffed up. It's not rude. Amen. And she says that love caused God to give us options. Hallelujah. And that's a word. Amen. She said that if you, if you ask for, for the, 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 um, the examples were awesome. If you ask your parents for chocolate and they say, no, they'll give you a fruit. Amen. That was a good example because chocolate, as good as it is, could be a bad thing for you. But your parents say, you know what? This is the better thing for you to eat. Amen. So I thank God, Sister Faith. Thank you for, for blessing us with your exaltation. Hallelujah. I, I want you to wrap up by telling us whether we should love or whether we should hate because remember exaltation is supposed to encourage or warn us so either what do you want to encourage us about love or do you want to warn us and then you wrap the, and then you're done amen we praise the name of the lord i want to encourage you guys to always show love for one another and amen. just like god did for for us and we should show that to 
Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. So now we, we are going to go into, we are going to go into our um, lesson reading. Hallelujah. Because the, the topic is about to come on and it's going to be taken from the book of Proverbs chapter six, verses six to nine. We bless the name of the Lord and brother um, David is going to read for us Proverbs chapter 6 verses 6 to 9 and that's David Samuel hallelujah we bless the name oh glory be to God Proverbs 6 verses 6 to 9 is our reading today and our topic is grow up hallelujah we praise the name of the Lord amen amen Present, good morning. Present, good morning. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Present, good morning to Teacher Esther. Present, morning. To Mother Angela, to Teacher Hillary, to Mother Colette, to Teacher Rhonda, to Teacher Nordia, to everybody in the respectable office. Present, good morning. Today, mm -hmm. I will be reading the foundation coming from Proverbs, Proverbs chapter six, verses mm -hmm. six to nine. All into the honor of glory of God. Amen. The beginning. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which mm -hmm. have no guide, oversee, overseer, or ruler. Provided mm -hmm. her meat in the summer, and gathered yes. her, gathered her food in the harvest. Yes. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? Mm -hmm. When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yes. And if I will read it one more time in order to mm -hmm. honor and glory of God. Yes. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Mm -hmm. Consider mm -hmm. her ways and be wise, which mm -hmm. haveth no guide, overseer, mm -hmm. or ruler. Yes. Provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Yes. How long will thou sleep? O sluggard, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. will thou arise out of thy sleep? I will yes. rest at the ninth, ninth verse, all into the honor and glory of God. Yes, amen, 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 amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Permit me to read for you from the Amplified Bible, and I'm reading this exact same scripture. And it says in the sixth verse, go to the ant, O lazy one. So that's what a slugger is, O lazy one. Observe her ways and be wise, which having no chief, overseer, or ruler, she prepares her food in the summer and brings in her provision of food for the winter in the harvest. How long will you lie down, O lazy one? When will you arise from your sleep and learn self-discipline? And that's the we rest right there. The nine verse, we thank the Lord, we glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. At this point in time, family in Christ, I pray that you're, you're ready for a word because I'm ready for a word. I'm, I'm, I'm always ready to hear from God, to hear what the word of God says. Amen. Because each one of us have some growing up to do. Amen. So I pray God that you don't set your heart and say that this person needs to grow up or that person needs to grow up, but you understand that the message is for you, 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 and I. Because each one of us has some growing up to do. And so put your hands together and let us welcome Teacher Nordia to the podium. Teacher Nordia Church. Church Teacher Nordia in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you're hearing me, put a thumbs up. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me. Great. Great, great. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to start off by just saying good morning, family. I am good morning. So to you. Um, good morning to Queen Esther. Good Praise morning him. to um, Mother Angela, Rhonda, Mother Paulette, Sister Hillary, to the entire congregation that's logged on to this room. Amen. 1041. Um, yes. I you a pleasant good morning. I hope that the Lord has been 
revealing himself onto you throughout the week. I hope that you are praying and meditating and not necessarily on your knees, but in your heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because Amen. That's the most important thing is that you are communing with God in whatever way is comfortable for you. You know, we all don't like the same type of friends and whatever friend that you desire, decide to find in the Lord, I hope that you cherish that friendship. Amen. So I'm going to sing one song and then we're going to get into it quickly. And the song I'm going to sing is hymn number 239 in the Red Hymn Book. If you do not have the Red Hymn Book, the name of the song is Awake My Soul and with the sun. <clears throat> Awake my soul, and with the sun, thy daily stage of duty run. Shake off the slaughter and joyful rise to pay thy morning sacrifice, redeem thy miss. Spend time that's past and live each day as if thy last improve thy talent with due care for the great day thyself prepare. Let all thy converse be sincere. Thy conscience as the noon declare. Think how all see in God thy ways and all thy secret thoughts surveys. Hallelujah. I'm not going to sing the entire hymn because it's seven verses and it is now. 1045 but um the the rest of the hymn you should take a look at it because the hymn is a very powerful hymn and it has to do with growing up asking the lord to awake your soul so um you know read the hymn meditate on it it's a good hymn to to sing you know um in our religion we don't always know what to say to god but we use hymns as a translation for our feelings. And uh, many people say that it becomes vain repetition, but only if your intent is not in the right place. If you have correct intent and your heart is set on Christ, you can sing a hymn to God and he would understand exactly what you mean. The hymn writer says that he knows the language of our groan. So understand that when you sing songs to Christ, that you are telling him something. And as long as you're in the right mindset, that he will be able to translate the language of your groan. Hallelujah. So the scripture for today came from Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 9. I also have another scripture today, and it is um, 1 Corinthians 13 verse i want to say 11 um it is the scripture where paul says when i was a child i spoke as a child i reasoned as a child i behaved as a child now i am a man i will put away childish things 
that might not be the King's James version, but that is the Sister Nordia version. Um, same thing, right? Okay, so grow up. Now, when I first got this topic, I said to myself, Lord, mommy always gives me the mean topics. Why can't I ever get the topic that say, you're blessed and highly favored? Why can't I ever get the topic that says, I love you? Why do I always get the topic that say, grow up and mean things? Uh, and it took me a long time to, um, to really put this topic together. I feel as though it personally, it personally hit me this topic because something I have always struggled with in my entire life was growing up. And I know that this is church and this is supposed to be a sermon, but I just want to talk to you about this. So the topic is grow up. Now, I looked at grow up, I looked at the definition, and I'm going to give you some definitions. Um, for for the record, was written by King Solomon. Um, there was a couple cha two chapters that were not written by him. Um, one was by King Lemuel, and one was by King Argur A R G U R. If I'm remembering correctly, it was written around 970 BC. Um, and you can fact check me because. Um, it's important to fact check the people who speak to you concerning the word of God. Amen. So I looked up the definition of grow and the definition of grow is to spring up and develop to maturity, to be able to grow in some place or situation, to assume some relation through or as if through a process of natural growth and to increase or expand. Then I looked up the definition of up and it says in or into a higher position or level with greater intensity. Now, when we hear grow up, we obviously know that grow up is not just um, two words. The two words together mean something completely different than the two words apart. And normally when you hear somebody telling another person to grow up, they're probably already um, an adult in terms of physiologically, physically. Um, we normally tell like our kids, you know, grow up, grow up. You know, we're telling people who we think should already be grown up to grow up. So I want us to think about that when we listen to the topic. And the top and the, um, the phrase grow up together means to begin to behave or think sensibly and realistically, to begin to behave or think sensibly and realistically. Now, let's talk about children. Children are impulsive. Children are all about themselves. Children live in a fantasy world. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. If the parents get in, get in a divorce, the child says the, the parents is divorcing because of me. This time it has nothing to do with the child. Normally children, if they can't get what they want, they throw a tantrum, they act out, they catch an attitude. All of this is impulsive behavior. Children do not do well under stressful circumstances. They do not know how to keep a calm composure. All of that is what children do and the topic is telling us to grow up children need guidance so the first thing i want to say to you is that growing up will determine how far you reach in your life a lot of us are grown up in certain areas and are very childish in others Yes. You might be very mature in church, in work. Mm -hmm. um, you know how to say the right thing. You know how to do the right thing. But in the home, you are a child. You cannot keep your composure. You are very mm -hmm. impulsive. 
you need a lot of guidance. Maybe you're very mature at home, but you're very childish in school or in academics. Maybe you're very good in school and mature. Maybe you're childish at work. Mm -hmm. I, we have all reached the full level of growing up well-rounded in all areas of our life. In some part of our life, we remain childish. And the Bible talks about putting away those childish things, putting away that kitty behavior. Now, it's important to, to note that it's nothing wrong with being a child. It's nothing wrong with childish things, but it's important to gain an understanding of having balance. And there are some childish behaviors that you must mature out of. If God wanted us not to be a child at all, he would never say that you have to have the heart of a child to enter into his kingdom. What he wants us to do is to mature out of certain childish stages. Now, there is a psycho um, psych psychology philosopher that says that if you do not mature out of a childish stage, then you would never go on to the next stage. So, some of us are stuck in a certain position because we have not matured. We have not gotten to the next level. Now, understand that you might not think that you're childish because even as being a child, God can still bless you to do adult things because this is all about his kingdom. Let's look at somebody that God has blessed to do adult things as a child. Let's talk about King David. Yeah, come on. Child, when he was anointed for the first time, he was tending to sheep. He was the youngest of his brothers. He was not um, really prepared to handle kingship, but the Lord saw his anointing and blessed him in spite of his immaturity. Because he failed to mature as life progressed, because let's not act like he didn't have time. He had plenty of time to mature. He got anointed three times. He fought many battles. He fought against Saul. He had time to mature and God gives us that. Time. But he decided that he still wanted to be immature. See, mm -hmm. David, was mature in terms of battleship, in terms right. of war, in mm -hmm. terms of kingdom. But in terms of moral character and development, that area of his life was very immature. So in 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan came to, to David. He said, a parable to him and he said there was a man who had a lot of riches and a lot of things and many sheep but there was one who had one and the lamb grew with him the lamb ate with him the lamb was with him this was his only lamb. and he gave the parable to him because david had took the wife of uriah mm -hmm. now that seems maybe in your eyes, that may have seemed like a very adult thing for him to take someone's wife, but in reality, it's very childish. A child has no concept of ownership. A child does not know that this belongs to me and this belongs to you. Hence the reason that children take whatever they see. Children technically steal. Are you a child? Are you stealing things that do mm -hmm. not belong to you? And I do not yeah. mean physical only, but right. I, are you stealing from the church? My God. My God. A child has no concept of ownership. A child yes. does not recognize that I should pay my tithes. Right. This money does not belong to me. <laughs> A child is led by greed. A child mm -hmm. is led by lust. A child mm -hmm. is led by the id. Now, when we talk about the id, 
that is um the three different mind i'm not gonna be like too technical about it three different mind complexes the id the ego and the super ego now the id is um i forgot the philosopher that came up with this he's very famous i just can't remember his name right now but um the id is a childish part of you the part of you that only reacts on desire so and the ego is the one that says to the id like hey you can't do that freud thank you sister jewel freud is the one that teaches about the id and the ego so some of us are still functioning from our id and we still act on our desires like david and david saw Bathsheba Baden and said to himself that she belongs to no one. Mm -hmm. But she does. Amen. It's important to us as the church of God to realize what belongs to who. Now, in a book, a very good book that you may want to read is called Living an Examined Life. It's written by James Hollis, and it's the 21 step plan for addressing unfinished business of your life. Um, it asks four questions. Where do I need to grow up? Mm -hmm. The second question is, what fear will I need to confront in doing so? The third question is, is that fear realistic? What is it from an earlier time in my development? See, a lot of us are holding on to fears that are not even real. A children, a child has no concept of reality. They just live in the world. They think everything that they think is real. Hence the reason a child mm -hmm. believes in Santa Claus. Hence the reason a, a child believes in, in Halloween. Hence the reason a child believes in the boogeyman. Because they live in this fantasy world. They have imaginary friends. Everything is in this fantasy. Um, there's a thing for teenagers called a personal fable. And it says that they believe that it won't happen to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm having sex, but I won't get pregnant. Oh, I'm having sex. I won't get an STD. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm doing drugs, but I won't become an addict. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm missing one Sunday of church, but that don't mean I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't pay my tithes this week, but that don't mean I'm never going to pay it again. Mm -hmm. Personal fable, childish behavior, childish things. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child. But now that I am a man, I'm put away. See, to put away doesn't mean that they don't exist. Doesn't mean you don't have some childish parts in you. You have to put it away, according to Paul. You know when you're a child and you play and you leave all the toys out? Somebody can get hurt. Yep. You step on some, uh, trip over something. Somebody gets hurt. Yes, sir. Put the childish things away. A lot of us are still living in childish behaviors and are wondering why our life is not the way it's supposed to be. But can I tell you it's because you have not matured or advanced to the next level? You don't want to see a two-year-old with pampers on, or a four-year-old, actually. I don't know the time sequence for this. I don't have it. So you don't want to see a four-year-old with pampers on. Mm -hmm. You want them to be potty trained. Mm -hmm. Because with pampers on, now they're in they're in it for a longer time. They're getting a rat. Mm -hmm. Life becomes more difficult when you are in a stage that you are already grown mm -hmm. Um drinking milk. We hear this in the church all the time. We have people with teeth still wanting to drink milk. You're going to end up biting your mother's breast. Can I tell you that? Mm -hmm. You're going to yes. people of God. You see, you're going to yeah. push the church to the next level. You are holding the church back with your childish behavior. Amen. Church cannot save people because we are too busy babysitting. We amen, amen. 
making sure that you are in a crib. We are too busy changing. Mm -hmm. We are too busy. Amen. As get older, they're supposed to be more independent. So then the Amen. mother will free time. Mm -hmm. But a child who stays childish is not a stress on yes. the a stress. Why we have to why we have to convince you to do the things that you already know will bring you a blessing. That's things you do to children. Children need guidance. Children need constant redirection. You come in a church because you need to get saved. You've been got saved. This is supposed to be a time of building, a time of growing. You don't need to, after you've been saved, you're saved. You don't come back on a Sunday saying, I'm trying to get saved. You should be trying to save someone else. Children need to be taken care of to that extent. One of the children in the Bible was Samuel. And another thing about being a child is not only that you need guidance, but you don't have a proper sense of self. So Samuel, even though he lived in a temple, he did not have any, any idea what the Lord had had planned for him. And when he heard the voice of the Lord, he went to Eli and he said, are you calling me? And Eli said, no. And he went back again and he said, are you calling me? Eli then had to guide Samuel to let him know that when he hears the voice, he ought to say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. As Samuel grow, grew older, he learned to do that for himself. And that's what caused him to be a powerful prophet, was that he took the lessons that he learned as a child and brought it into his adult life so that he can be secure in who he is. A child, is incapable of being a role model. A child is incapable of being dependent, dependable. A child is incapable of being accountable. A child is incapable of being responsible. A child is incapable of taking care of themselves. And maturity is, what, is what's needed to fully live out the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, self-control. A child does not have self-control. A child is impulsive. Excessive childish behavior can stunt our growth. And one moment of kiddishness can erase 10 years of kingliness that is a quote by T.D. Jakes. Kids are in a fantasy, not a reality. I spent my entire childhood wanting to grow up. There is this elusive concept that growing up is final. But to grow up is a continuous process that we will all be doing until the day we die. How do we put away childish things? How do we take away the childish behavior that we have so long taken part of and become a part of? Through prayer, through meditation, through worship, through studying, through practice. For a child to become an adult, they must practice. They must start off by trying things out. That's why when, you're, when, when somebody's a child, you don't want to help them with everything because you want them to build a certain level of independence. Mature adults are dependable. You can depend on them. Can God depend on you? Can your church depend on you? Or do we always have to worry about the fact that you might be sad today, so we have to wear you up. We have to, 
we have to make you shout we have to make you catch power we have to provide those feelings to you that you ought to be providing to yourself the church is not your parent the church is not here to raise you The last question that James Hollis talks about in his book is, what is the price I have to pay for not growing up? The scripture that we read today speaks about the, the, the ant and the sluggard. Go to the ant, the slacker. Observe its ways and become wise. We're reading this from the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom instruction. Um, it's telling us to observe the ways of the ant. And if you look at an ant, most of the times they're never really together, um, except at the ant hill. And, you know, I, I, where I live, I have, a, I have a couple ants, and um, sometimes you, you just find them crawling on your foot, and you slap them and kill it. But um, the ant is very independent, and the ant colony doesn't really have no leader. Everybody works together to do a job. So observe its ways and become wise without leader administrator or ru ruler it prepares its provisions in the summer it gathers food during harvest how long will you stay in bed will you get up from your sleep a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the arms to rest and your poverty will come like a robber now let me read the amplified version because I went down a little bit. That's into verse 11. Now, the Amplified Version says in the ninth verse, how long will you lie down, O lazy one? When will you arise from your sleep and learn self-discipline? And one of the key contexts of adulthood is self-discipline and self-control. I know that we all think adults are people who pay bills. We all think adulthood comes with, I don't know, kids, marriage, um, a house. Then you're really ad an adult. You're not an adult unless you don't have bills to pay or um, a family or a kid. But real adulthood comes from self-discipline, self control, responsibility, accountability. It comes from all those things. Have you been, take a look at your life and see, have you been embodying, have you been displaying responsibility? Have you been displaying accountability? Or is it, is it, is it that every time something happens, it's not me. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Anytime there's a group of children playing somewhere and something breaks, everyone says, it wasn't me, it was him, it was her. She was, she was standing by at last. She was, he was doing that. And there's a big commotion because no one is taking accountability. So now the adult has to come in now and read the situation and investigate and change different things. So look at your life and look at the way that God responds to you. Because that is what is going to let you know if you're a child and if you are an adult. We respond to children differently than when we respond to adults. Children, we're a little bit more soft. We try to be a little bit more affectionate, but also 
we extend more discipline. You, we don't discipline adults, or we at least we shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to tell, tell an adult, say good evening, or say good afternoon. You shouldn't have to tell an adult, go brush your teeth, or, <laughs> or simple things like that. You tell children that. When adults do something wrong, we don't necessarily discipline them. You know, but when a child does something wrong, we discipline them. Perfect example. So Faith stays with me a lot. Now, Faith, as we all know, is a very smart child. Very, a very smart child. And there's this, this show that I told Faith not to watch. But Faith has a cell phone. So Faith decided that she's going to watch the show on her cell phone. Now, if it was an adult, I probably would have been like, well, that's their issue. Let them, let them watch what they want to watch. But because she's a child and I am still partly responsible for what she's doing, I have to respond. So I hear she watching the show, but like I said, children lack accountability. So most times you gotta catch them red handed. Otherwise it's gonna be, it wasn't me, it was no. So I patiently waited the entire day, waiting for her to turn on the show, waiting to see what she's gonna do. I'm watching her, watching her, spying on her. You're not watching the show. I say, well, yes, okay. She got to wait. The following morning, I came in, I came into the living room and she was talking to Danny. And Danny says, oh, you're watching that show. And I said, yes, this is my chance. I said, Faith, give me that phone right now. You're not supposed to be watching that. I told you, I told you not to have you watching that. So then Danny says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Faith. I didn't mean to say anything. I said, you don't have to worry about that. I was, I was planning for her since yesterday. I just couldn't catch her. Now, <clears throat> this is the same way that God responds to us as children. He watches your behavior, he sees what you do, and he responds. And because you're a child, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this person did this, this person, because Faith could have been thinking, if Danny didn't open his big mouth, I wouldn't have got in trouble. But you need to take accountability for what you've done for who you are. You are not who you want to be. You are what you do every single day. I wanna say that again, cause that may have fl fly across some of our he her heads. You are not who you want to be. So you, when somebody asks you who you are, you're gonna be like, well, I'm calm. I, you know, I am very dedicated to my church. You're very dedicated to your church, but you only show up on Sunday and you show up late because you just want to get service. I um, am very financially responsible. <laughs> and this is all you saying, all these things. But knowing that this is not the behavior you display at home. You are the behavior that you display. So I'm sorry to tell you, as much as you want to be nice, if you're mean every day, you're mean. As much as you want to be committed, if you're cheating on God every day, with alcohol, with sin, with idols, you're not committed. You are not who you want to be. You are the things that you practice every single 
day. I want to leave with you. I want to leave with you. Um, the moment, the moments where people grew up, and some moments when people matured. Um, after hearing the parable. Yes, David had been childish all his life. Yes, he stole the lady's wife. But after hearing the parable, David took accountability for who he was. And he said to the Lord that he repents. At that moment, David had took a step into adulthood by saying, Lord, I repent. Lord, I want to be better. And this is why he was a man after God's own heart. Because even though he was childish, he took steps to continuously go along that path of growing up and of being better. Peter grew up, the man who's chopping off ears and denying Christ. Impulsive, I mean, his impulsivity led him to walk on water, but it also made him sink. And eventually he matured. And because of his maturity, the Lord said upon this rock, I'm gonna build my church. The Lord cannot build anything on a child. A child cannot sustain the weight of what it means to be a true follower of Christ. You have to mature. It is now or never. It is now or never. And the Lord is giving you options to choose this day who you're going to serve because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The sacrifice of his son was the, was the opening of options for you to choose whether you're going to live or whether you're going to die. Sister Faith said that because they love us, they give us options. He gives us the option to serve him or not. He gives us the option of life or death. To be a, adult, a mature adult or to be a child. He gives us options. Which one are you going to choose? It is time to put away childish things. And it is time to mature with the love of Christ in your heart so that the church can truly move on. Truly, we often say that the youth are the future. And I feel we fail to understand our own words. The future of the church is not in the youth. The future of the church is in the hopes that the youth will mature. The church cannot raise you. The church cannot move on because we are stuck babysitting. The church cannot expand because we are given the responsibility of providing you food, shelter, clothing, love, feelings of security, feelings of hopefulness. And all of these can be a byproduct of being an adult. But we mean to say that you must hold the responsibility and the partial responsibility from yourself to provide those things to yourself. Your growth is a result of your efforts to grow. And without your efforts to grow, it is important to understand that the rest of your life 
would be spent not only receiving the benefits of child, but also their consequences that make you dependable on others, that make you prone to harsh discipline, that makes you prone to stagnancy. I'm going to close by reading the the scripture that is going to wrap up our entire day, and that is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. And Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly because we serve God in partiality, depending on him. But we can only see in partiality. But then face to face, once we have taken up the responsibility of growing up, now I know in part because a child cannot see reality. They live in a fantasy world. So they no longer know everything. But then I shall know fully. And you shall know fully if you mature, even as I have been fully known. And to be fully known is by the all-knowing, all-powerful God. So I want to leave with you that it's important for you to grow up. It's important. The church needs you. The church needs you. It has been a blessing from your infancy until now to raise you, to take care of you. The days of feeding you milk were joyous. It was cute when you do certain things. But now that you have grown up, it's not cute anymore. And we ask that you level up to where you are right now in all areas of your life, whichever area that that might be. Be steadfast, unmovable, ever abounding in the word of God and be a pillar in your church, in your community, in your family. Love God with your whole heart, with your whole mind, with your whole soul. And I know if you love him, you're going to grow up. If you love him, you're going to mature. If you love him, you're gonna put away some childish things because when you fall in love, you don't wanna be acting like a kid anymore. When you fall in love, you start acting pretty grown up. You put away childish things very quickly when you start falling in love. So just as we, in carnality, we fall in love and we put away childish things, fall in love with Christ, and grow up and these are my few words to you amen 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 we bless the name of the lord hallelujah we bless the name of the lord we bless the name of the lord what a word what a word hallelujah we glorify the name of the lord in jesus name amen hallelujah and this is the reason why I, 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 I drop this topic because I, I, I give topic that I expect a, a, a word because when we need a word where we need to go up, we need to level up, we need to come up, amen, that we would be able to produce the fruits of the spirit. That's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to produce the fruits of the spirit. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you to Sister Faith again, who gave us a wonderful exaltation. We bless the name of the Lord. Put your hands together. Come on. Let's just praise God. Let's just glorify God. And then we had teacher Nadia, 
who came in. She didn't preach to us, but she taught us. Hallelujah. We went to school this morning on growing up. And I want to glorify God for that. I want to magnify God for that. I pray that you allow the word that has been planted. I pray God that you allow it to spring up and bring forth fruit in its season and in its time. You know, that we would hold ourselves accountable for that lesson that we were taught today. If we didn't know, now we know. Amen. If we didn't know yesterday, we know today. So now we know and we understand now how do we order our step. Understanding and remembering that when you don't know that, guess what happens? You, you get a pass, but you can't get to the level of maturity and think that ignorance is going to still give you a pass. Because when you get a certain age, you are held. God holds you accountable for what you have learned. He holds you accountable for what you practice. He holds us accountable and responsible. So let us just glorify the name of the Lord in our words, in our actions, in our thoughts, in whatever we do. Let it just just be to magnify the name in his honor and in his glory. Amen. I'm thankful for the word today. And I, I indeed got a message. I indeed getting clarification. I don't know about you. I don't know about any other preacher or any other minister who thinks they got it all put together and think that they know everything and ain't nobody. They alone could teach a lesson or they alone could be teachers. But, but I have learned that the, 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 the longer and the more I sit in the student seat, that it makes me a greater teacher. So I have learned to sit and exchange the, the teacher's desk for a student desk. And today I exchanged my, my seat and indeed I was taught a valuable lesson that would be help me to empower the church and to empower myself in the name of Jesus. So we thank the Lord. I bless you guys. Thank you guys for all of you who joined. Thank you guys for who are listening, who is going to be listening to this, um, to this sermon, to this our service um, on YouTube, whether be it a year from now, 10 years from now, two days, whatever period of time that you'll be listening to this message, I pray that this message would anoint your heart. I pray that this message would be manna to your soul. For whatever period you hear it, it would be the period that God desired that you need it in your life. And I pray God that when his words speak unto you, that you would say, speak Lord, thy servant hear it, and you would make the necessary adjustment. Do not allow it ego to have its way. Do not allow anything to, to take hold of it and strangle the word that we need. Because let me tell you something, when stuff is going on with us and we get that word, it's not an easy pill to swallow. It's not an easy pill to swallow when people start talking about teething and you're a thief. <laughs> You understand? When people start talking about adultery and you're an adulterer, it's not an easy pill to swallow until you can take accountability and responsibility for who you are and understand what the preacher said when, or the teacher said, when she said that who we say we are is not who we are unless our habits, habitual, we read in, in Purpose Driven Life that a man who cheats once on his wife is a cheater. He cannot say that he's faithful. Hallelujah. It has to be habitual. You're, you're, you have to be habitually good. You understand? You can't say I'm a good person until you, do, you, you don't do good. Hallelujah. So I bless the Lord today and I bless God for confirmation time and time again. I bless the Lord for showing up for us every time. He never leave us, neither has he forsaken us. It might feel that way at times, but by God, by God, by God, every time I look, you see, all I got to do, and I want to remind you today, all you got to do is cast your eyes upon the wall and you're going to see that the handwriting, you're going to see the finger that God is writing on the wall. No matter what circumstances says, he keeps showing up for you. And if he keeps showing up for you, it's about time that you level up and you grow up for your Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what love causes us to do. Amen. So we bless the name of the Lord. I pray God that you would continue to have a blessing 
blessed and fruitful day. I pray, God, that you would be prosperous. I pray, God, that you would go out and infect somebody with the love of God, that you would infect them with the blood of Jesus. Sister Faith said that fire, you know, that fire red, and you know, so then, and if the Holy Ghost is the fire, then the color of the Holy Ghost is red. I love it. Nothing. And she opened in her opening and she said, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I pray God that the blood of Jesus flows in you, that it flows upon you, that it flows around you, that wherever you go, that you would infect people with the blood of Jesus that is able to cleanse, that is able to keep, that would give hope, that would do miracles because we by ourselves are nothing and we cannot do nothing. But all glory belongs to him. All power belongs to him. And if we believe that, and if we, we, we practice that, and if we, 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 we let for that, and if we allow that to flow out of us, in turn, we would indeed bless somebody, and we would have put our life on a hilltop where men would see the good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Heaven bless you. Heaven keep you. God's grace and God's mercy be with you as we have come to the end of our worship for today on this platform because our worship is constant but on this zoom where we gather here this is where we, we this comes to an end but we continue to worship god every minute every second every hour of your life continue to lift his name and worship him in the beauty of holiness father we thank you we glorify you we magnify your name for you are worthy to be praised it is by your power and it is by your might that we are here, Lord. And by God, Father, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your love. We acknowledge, oh God, that you had loved us first. And it is you who had called us. And oh God Almighty, we acknowledge that we cannot do anything except you be our help. Continue to be our constant guide. Oh God Almighty, help us, God, to be a church with a difference. Help us to be a Bible. I believe in church oh god a church of truth a church of accountability and responsibility oh god that our words and our actions would match and that we would be examples of the fruit of the spirit that we would not say god with our mouth and our life living and character are childlike oh god but help us to mature in you blessed god that we would be able to give birth blessed god of the fruits of the spirit my god and my redeemer we can't do it without you lord we have a desire oh god but i pray that our desire and our zeal is according to your almighty word i pray oh god that you would touch our lives that you would leave no stone unturned that you would massage stony hearts those that are weak that you would build it up those who have a stiff neck oh god that you would break it down all for your honor and your glory that this church oh god would not be a stumbling block nor a rock of offense, oh God, unto those who want to come into the house of the Lord. But my God and my Redeemer, Father, we glorify you, oh God, Father, 10,000 of our tongue is not sufficient to thank you, but we thank you anyhow. We praise you anyhow. We magnify you anyhow in the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue will confess that you are the true and the living God. But thank you for those who are within the sound of my voice, blessed God. Thank you for those those who would get a word, thank you for those who are listening, blessed Lord. Those who are to come, blessed God. Those who need a word, oh God, direct them, oh God, that they would get a word in the name of Jesus. That they shall be strengthened, oh God. That they would renew their strength in the name of Jesus. Those that are sick amongst my brethren, oh God, pass by and touch them in the name of Jesus. Pass by with your healing touch, oh merciful and ever mighty God. For you know and you see all things. You are a God of merit. Miracles. You're a God who can change things. You can change the impossible. And Father, I trust you. Father, I look unto you for this blessed God. We touch and agree right now. Your word has already been said, Lord, where two and three are gathered. And if we are touching anything that is concerning you, oh God, you are in the midst and that is to be blessed. Today, oh God, we are more than two and we are more than three, mighty God. And I pray, oh God, that if our heart is indicting in a good matter, oh God, if our heart is concerning things that is according to your will and your desire for us in 
our lives. Father, we touch and agree right now in the name of Jesus that our desires would come to pass, be it done unto us according to your gracious word, be it done unto us according to your divine will, blessed God. You have brought us on this platform today, Lord. I believe that everyone that showed up right here today, blessed God, the ones that would come and hear this message, oh God, the ones that would receive this message, oh Master God, that it is by your design, oh God. But it wasn't by accident, oh God. It wasn't because of a planned service, oh God, but it's because you caused us to show up, oh God, because this service is always planned, Lord. And there is many who is supposed to be here that is not here, blessed God. There is many that had contracted to be here, oh Lord, is not here. But in the name of Jesus, Lord, as the invitation went out, almighty God, Father, some came and received, and I believe those that came, oh God, that you send them to get this word today. And I pray, oh God, that they would put it to use, oh God. I pray, oh God, that it would be mania, oh, mania, oh God, that it would plant them by the rivers of water, blessed God, where they would bring forth fruit in due time and due seasons, and their leaves shall not with a blessed God, but whatsoever they do it, they shall prosper in the name of the Lord, and that your delight, O oh God, would be in them, O oh God, and it would be in the law of the Lord, and that they would meditate upon it day and night. Father, we thank you, blessed God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Remember the exalted, blessed God, bless her. Remember the preacher, oh God, bless her too, almighty God, and keep them, Lord, in the bond of peace and in the bond of unity, my God and my Redeemer. Remember this church family, Lord, as rumors of war, blessed God, Father, false teaching and false doctrine, blessed God, but in the name of Jesus right now, blessed God. Father, we have made a decision and we have made a covenant with you, blessed God, that this we would do our dying, Lord. Father, oh God, through flood and flame, if Jesus leave, oh God, that we will gladly, we wouldn't just go with you, but we will gladly go with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen and amen. And now we do thank the Lord for this, our spiritual food. But most because of Jesus' blood, let manna to our souls be given. The bread of life sent down from heaven for Christ's sake. Amen. And may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. May God bless you and may God keep you. I pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts has been acceptable in his sight, for he is our strength and our redeemer. Remember, brethren, remember, remember, I pray that God would watch between you and I while we are absent one from another. What I am praying, I am praying that when you are not in my presence and I'm not in your presence, that I will not ill speak you and you will not ill speak me, that you would not seek my hurt. That's what it means. That's what it means. And if you do, then I would say that, you know, that, 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 that's the prayer of Laban and Jacob. Then let your God deal with you if you should speak about your brethren. Hallelujah. And if I should speak about you, then let my God deal with me. Now I say to you with understanding. So if you don't want to say, don't say, it because it is by the, by your spoken word that you would be judged. Hallelujah. Let the Lord watch between you and I, while we are absent from one another. God bless you. God keep you. May he cause his light to shine upon you, give you strength and give you peace, grace and mercy in the wonderful, precious name of Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. God bless, God bless, God bless everybody. Amen, amen. Hallelujah.